Hey, this is Ilocus, and today I'm going to show you a quick overview and guide to the EVGA Precision and OC Scanner X. These programs have just got a brand new facelift, the GTX 680, so I'm going to give you a quick run through of how to tweak and overclock your graphics card to get the maximum performance. Okay, so this is the EVGA Precision X. Uh, this is the brand new program. It's just got a nice facelift. It has a like kind of like a speedometer effect here in the center. Now, everything you notice about it has been kind of rearranged. There are still sliders on it, but they do completely different things. So let's start on the left. First is GPU select. Tells you what GPU you have. Sync, if you have multiple GPUs, it'll do this across all the same GPUs. Uh, adjust voltage. This is the old setting that you used to have with the vGPU that allowed you to set the voltage and keep it stable at that. That's kind of a detriment now to the new 680, so don't bother with it for now. Test allows you to test your scan, so that way you can check it out so you can see if it's stable or not. Monitoring shows you all of the different stuff that you can have temperature-wise and tachometer, gauges, anything like that that allows you to select. You have performance log, which shows you the performance across the cards. Uh, your frame rate target. That's a brand new feature. Basically what it does is that when you enable it, it locks the card to be able to perform for a certain frames per second. So let's say you're playing an older game. Say you're playing the original StarCraft and you really only want to see 45 frames per second. So what it'll do is it'll only make sure that you use a certain amount of the power to reach 45 frames per second so that way you don't use unnecessary power on older games. Pretty cool little feature. Profiles allow you to save whatever changes you make to one of these profiles and click them in order to jump to it in case something goes wrong or if you just want to be able to switch between your settings. On the right side you have the temperature which fluctuates in Celsius, it allows you to tell you how hot your card is, your fan speed which allows you to see how fast your fan is spinning, as well as being able to enable you to customize your own fan curve. Now these all move depending on which way you would like them according to fan speed and the temperature at the bottom. So you can adjust that in order to make your card uh, quieter if you prefer that and or ramp up and perhaps cool a little bit sooner than normal if it were stock settings. Alright, so let's look at the center. So you have power target, GPU clock offset, and memory clock offset, and Windows startup. Check this so that way whenever you start up your computer, it'll automatically kick it up. Now I would do this once you have a stable overclock. So first is power target. The GPU is very power efficient, downclock itself when it's not necessary to use that much power. So what this does is normally the graphics card will use 100% of power whenever it needs to kick in basically, so if you're playing a 3D game of some sort. It can go down to as low as 70% if you really want to keep your consumption low. So let's set it back to 100%. It can go as high as 132%. For all intents and purposes we want an overclock so we're not caring about how much power it pulls from the wall. So let's put it at 132% for maximum stability. Then comes the game. You have to then play with your graphics cards and add certain amounts of megahertz to it to see before it crashes. So for instance, 70 megahertz is easily doable and let's put this to 200. What this does, you hit apply and this will overclock your graphics card that it'll use 132% power whenever you kick in a 3D application or a benchmark. It will then push the clock past 70 megahertz extra in addition to 198 me memory offset. So you'll get a little bit of a performance boost. So if you look right now, I'm not doing anything. Right here is your base clock. Your base clock is what your graphics card will always get to under whatever load. Your boost clock is generally what it's going to try to achieve in almost every circumstance. And then it will go further depending on your overclock and the heat that's being generated by your graphics as well as voltage. So for instance, let's run a quick test. What test will bring is it'll bring an OC scanner. Now notice I just kicked in the OC scanner. We have the graphics card pushing very hard. It's gone past the base clock, past the boost clock, and all the way up to 1,154 megahertz. So let's uh, turn off the bench, and you'll watch the card go back down, and it goes down to 619 megahertz. So let's say you make an overclock that's too High. So let's say we try and go straight to 200 megahertz, all right? Some cards can do this. Mine t tends to not be able to. So let's put this, let's go to 500. All right, so let's apply this. Now what will happen is when I run this test, my computer will most likely crash, meaning my OpenGL will crash because it won't detect the card because it goes into safety mode. So then it comes back and says, your OpenGL driver lost connection with your display. That means you failed. So you got to go back and tweak it and go down a little bit lower to see if you can find a more stable overclock. 
So I know for certain that my computer can do 150 megahertz and 500 megahertz overclock on my GPU and still stay stable. Now please note that once you have an OpenGL crash, your boost will sometimes act funky, so you won't get the consistent base. So you should generally restart your computer. So let's run a test real quick. And you can see that my boost is extreme. I have 1,234 GPU clock, and I've got a giant overboost. It's fat past the normal base clock, past the boost clock, it's overboosted quite nicely. My temperatures right now are climbing. They'll climb to around 70-ish or so, and the fan speed will be nice and quiet. Right now I'm actually in the room. The computer is sitting about a foot away from me and about three feet from this very sensitive microphone. So it's actually quiet and easily you know, dealt with. Even if you had two or three, it would still be nice and quiet. Uh, a extreme achievement considering the 480 and the 580. Okay, so let's go over the OC scanner itself. So at the very top, they have a button right here. It says NV-Z, which is basically GPU-Z and has a little bit more stuff on it. Uh, it's obviously skin with the rest of it. You have very, very detailed information about your graphics card. You can see everything from the model, GPU, BIOS, memory, GPU temperature, GPU load, memory load, everything you could ever want to know about the graphics card basically inside of Windows right here. All right, so what else? is on the uh, OC scanner. Well, you have obviously several different tests. You have a furry test, a tessellation test, and a CPU burn-in test. You also have benchmarks for a furry and tessellation test. And you have options for it down here on the settings. So under settings here, you can change the images that are uh, behind it. So if you wanted to put like a picture of your face in the background, you could do that. And you can change the color of the wheel itself, display true clock speeds, play alarm when values out of range, an artifact scanning. Well, what is an artifact? An artifact is basically when your graphics card is generally getting too hot and that you start getting glitches in whatever you're looking at. So for instance, you'll get like radials, you'll have like funky pixels, sparkling pixels, stuff like that will be called an artifact. Now, generally that happens when your GPU gets too hot, overvolted, undervolted, something's obviously wrong. So what you can do is you can set how many you can see right here before the actual program shuts off. You can also enable FXAA for tessellation tests. And you can put a screenshot folder settings, window parameters, so you can have a, a whole vast array of different uh, screen sizes. Uh, OSI on-screen info, you can enable or disable it. GPU temperature protection. So basically, if your graphics card gets too hot, you can set it to will it just shut off the test so you don't damage it. Heavy mode, which is high GPU usage, is what I generally use to test whenever I'm doing a benchmark and you can use this, it warns you that uh, it may cause uh, instability and uh, may cause your car, car to reboot. Generally, you won't uh, need to enable that unless you really want to punch your graphics card hard. So anyway, what we'll do is we'll start the uh, benchmark now. Now, what's gonna happen is this little thing's gonna warm up and then along the top here, you'll be able to see the actual bench working right here. Over time, it will complete when it has 100%, down here it will give you a score. So right now I've got 162 frames per second. Generally you'll see uh, quite a bit less if you enable the heavy mode. But while this is going, uh, you can see that this is a log file, so you can see your test results as well as reset everything to stock. So what will happen right now is after this benchmark completes, you'll see a average frame per second right here. So that way you can get a general gist of how well you're overclock and maybe how much more performance. As you can see, the boost clock has gone to 1247, so we are right now cooking. You can see right here that we have the GPU load at almost 100%. You have quite a bit of memory that's still free, only 8% that's being used. And uh, you can see your GPU temperature right now is at 68 degrees and climbing. It'll reach around 70 to 80, somewhere in that area, and we'll, uh, by the time this test is complete, which it is now, I have an average of 159 frames per second score of 95,090. So anyway, what this does is it allows you to benchmark and see your reliability of your overclock. I would test it several times. One last note. So on my actual, you see these are my numbers, 132%, 150 megahertz, 500 megahertz. This may not be the same cases for you. So you may not actually see these numbers or you may see better than what I have. A lot of overclocking has to do with spending the time and the effort to bench it, change your numbers, slide a little bit at a time up. 
So in other words, you don't want to go straight to these numbers. You want to slowly increase it by 5 to 10 megahertz each time to you find that safe, sweet spot that your cards will run stably, reliably, and you'll get the best potential overclock. Anyway, once again, this is Silicus. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Subscribe if you want to get more. Check out my Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. There will be at the links at the bottom. And I'm still doing the Battlefield contest at the time of this video, so make sure you guys subscribe and comment so you guys can get a chance to win that. Anyway, once again, this is the EVGA Precision X and OC Scanner X. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.